next section of the book begins chapter 4 the section is on how uh, markets work so this is part 2 of your book and chapter 1 is the first chapter of this part which is talking about the market forces of supply and demand ki ne agar economics pehle kabhi nahi bhi padhi hai but economics ka naam suna hoga to supply and demand to definitely aapne suna hoga these are like the fundamental uh, pillars of economics so it is very very important to understand ki supply or demand exactly kya hote hain how do they operate in a particular market and uh, what happens when one of them changes if there is any change in the demand or there is any change in the supply how does it affect the market equilibrium that's precisely what we are going to do in this chapter but before we come to demand and supply and we try and understand what demand and supply are it is first important to understand what do we mean by a market so we say that supply and demand uh, are behavior of people and uh, supply and demand se hame pata lagta hai ki kaise demand side which is primarily comprising of consumers and supply side which is comprising of producers how do they come to the market and they interact with each other but ye market kya hota hai what is exactly market market is nothing but it is a group of buyers and sellers so buyers and sellers of a particular good or service obviously the buyers will uh, determine the demand and the sellers will determine the supply now markets na alag alag tarike ke hote hain there is no uniformity of markets if you look around yourselves you will notice that some markets are highly organized whereas some markets are not organized at all highly organized market ka matlab hai that you have complete information markets mein jo bhi players hain such as the consumers and the suppliers they know exactly what's happening in the market all the buyers and all the sellers come to one place and they purchase or sell the commodity or service at one time at at the same place wherein which will make sure that there are no heterogeneities or there are no differences in the market unorganized markets aap uh, bol sakte ho ya less organized bol sakte ho where all the suppliers do not know each other the suppliers are widely spread out and in fact the buyers are also widely spread out now in such situations what is possible is that it is possible for a supplier to sell the same commodity at a different price and in reality you will definitely come across these uh, less organized forms of market more frequently you will most likely come across markets which are less organized where the same commodity of the same quality might be sold at different prices to different consumers at different locations and that is uh, primarily you know something that is more prevalent in reality but um, uh, highly organized markets we have few examples if you talk about the financial market uh, it is one of the very very highly organized markets because you cannot trade a particular stock at different prices on different platforms yeah you if you are in the same market if you are in the indian stock market i don't know if you have an idea of how the financial market operates but if you have even the slightest of the idea you know that you cannot have differences in prices of the stocks that you are trading in uh, at different platforms you are using any platform you have to give the same price or you will get the same price for your stock in return if whatever if you are buying you will pay the price or if you are selling you will get the price um it is an example of a highly organized market but if you talk about any good suppose you go to purchase uh, some fruits yeah i would call it as a less organized market market of fruits why because if you go to a shop uh, nearby to your place you are living in a residential society you go to a place nearby your uh, house maybe you will get a price uh much higher than the price you can expect to get at a mandi so mandi is basically a place where all the sellers come together and uh, you know they set up their small shops uh, next to each other now at such a place 
you will find the differences in prices definitely because you will find that there at at these places where all the sellers are coming together they have to sell at a price which is much more competitive in nature and you will definitely find the prices to be way cheaper as compared to the prices you get if you purchase the fruits from the vendor uh, coming in front of your house so these are the kind of market forms which are less organized because there is no uniformity kahin pe aapko kisi price ka product milega kahin pe aapko kisi aur price ka product milega and most market forms are definitely of this category of less organized in economics jab hum markets ki baat karte hain to hum mainly ek specific form of market ki baat karte hain jisko hum bolte hain that this is the most efficient form of market but at the same time this is not the most practical form of market this is not something that you will witness around yourselves in reality and again uh, this comes from our discussion on the positive and normative analysis when you talk about economics as a subject as an academic subject the things work differently when you apply these principles on ground जब आप रियलिटी में ये प्रिंसिपल्स अप्लाई करते हो जैसे कोई पॉलिसी एडवाइजर अगर इस प्रिंसिपल को अप्लाई करेगा द पॉलिसी एडवाइजर विल कीप अ हंड्रेड मोर थिंग्स इन माइंड व्हेन अप्लाइंग दिस इकोनॉमिक प्रिंसिपल ऑन ग्राउंड सिमिलरली जब आप थ्योरी की बात करते हो आप कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स की बात करते हो देन इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी की ये थ्योरी आपको ऑन ग्राउंड इन रियालिटी हमेशा उसी सेम फॉर्मेट में मिलेगी जिस फॉर्मेट आप यहाँ पे थ्योरी में बात कर रहे हो बुक में बात कर रहे हो बट डेफिनेटली इकोनॉमिक्स का जो प्रिंसिपल है वो कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स में बिलीव करता है और वो ये बोलता है दैट कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स आर द मोस्ट एफिशिएंट काइंड ऑफ मार्केट्स नाउ व्हाट एग्जैक्टली आर कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स आर मार्केट देर आर मेनी प्रॉपर्टीज बट ब्रॉडली मेन मेन चीजें जो होती है कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स की वो ये है दैट इट इज अ मार्केट विच हैज मेनी बायर्स you have a lot of buyers in such markets and you at the same time also have a lot of sellers also another important property is that the product ya service jiske market ke bare mein aap baat kar rahe ho it is a homogeneous product matlab jitne bhi sellers hain market mein they are selling the same product of the same quality of the same shape of the same color of the same size so the product is exactly the same copy jo har seller ke paas hai every seller has exactly the same product and uh, there are many sellers selling the same product and there are many buyers who are willing to buy the product now because of these strong properties of this competitive market you notice that the prices in such market are also uniform every seller will sell the commodity at the same price you wouldn't find differences in prices कि कोई एक सेलर आपको अलग प्राइस पे सेल कर रहा है या दूसरा सेलर आपको अलग प्राइस पे सेल कर रहा है दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन सच मार्केट्स एंड सेलर्स एंड इन फैक्ट द बायर्स आल्सो बोथ ऑफ देम आर प्राइस टेकर्स प्राइस टेकर्स का मतलब है दैट वॉट एवर द प्राइस इज इन द मार्केट इट हैज टू बी टेकन इट हैज टू बी एक्सेप्टेड बाय बोथ बायर्स एंड सेलर्स दे कैन नॉट से अरे इस मार्केट में प्राइस तो बहुत कम है वी विल नॉट uh that's not working for us hum ek higher price charge karenge that is not possible in a perfectly competitive market why because agar if they will charge a higher price then because there are many sellers who are selling the same product at a lesser price nobody will buy from a seller who is charging a higher price so even if this seller is unhappy he still has to sell the product at the same price he cannot charge a higher price because agar ye higher price charge karenge to inke paas consumers aana band ho jayenge because there are many more people like him is product ko sell kar rahe hain similarly they cannot charge a lower price because if they charge a lower price although they will get more consumers like people will come here lekin uh, it is not possible to charge a lower price because you will realize once you do perfectly competitive markets later in the syllabus that prices are exactly equal to the cost marginal cost specifically or ye exact terminology thoda aapko like when we deal with perfectly competitive markets tab samajh aayegi but agar wo is price se niche koi bhi price set karenge then they will incur losses and that's also not tolerable for a profit making firm it is also not tolerable ki wo ek loss incur kare so कहने का मतलब है कि ये ऐसे मार्केट फॉर्म्स होते हैं जहां पे प्राइसेस सेम रहती हैं एंड एवरी सेलर इज सेलिंग द कमोडिटी एट द सेम प्राइस बट एज आई सेड दैट नॉट ऑल मार्केट्स आर परफेक्टली कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट्स देयर आर इम्परफेक्ट मार्केट्स एज वेल एंड सच मार्केट्स एग्जांपल्स ऑफ सच मार्केट्स आर मोनोपलीज मोनोपसोनीज यू हैव मोनोपलीज यू हैव मोनोपसनीज यू हैव ओलिगोपोलीज 
so you have different market forms which are not perfect which are imperfect and they are also uh, market forms which are important to study because we do come across a lot of markets which are imperfect and it is important to understand the economic principles behind it what is the difference between a perfect and an imperfect market what are the kind of inefficiencies that are created by imperfect markets then we move on to the um, point of concern of this chapter that is demand now uh, demand is closely related to something called as demand curve because you understand demand better with a visual representation which is called as the demand curve now demand curve typically has prices on the y axis and quantity demanded on the x axis and um, quantity demanded of any product or any service is nothing but the amount of that good that the buyers are willing and able to purchase please stress on the word willing or able to purchase ye jo demand curve hai ye aapko ye cheez batata hai ki at a given price what is the quantity demanded for a consumer theek hai now demand curves could be individual demand curves i am starting with the individual demand curve and then we will move on to the market demand curve to so, agar main kisi individual ke demand curve ki baat karu to basically ye aapko batata hai ki agar suppose kisi commodity ka price hai 10 rupees to main is 10 rupees pe kitna kharidne ke liye ready hu how much quantity of this product i am ready to purchase as a consumer so suppose i am ready to purchase two suppose the price falls to 5 now the commodity is cheaper i am ready to purchase a lot more let's say i am ready to purchase 4 units and the price let's say again drops to 2 and i am ready to purchase further more units and say that is 6 so these are three points here at different prices at 10 when the commodity is priced at 10 then i am only purchasing two units if it is at 5 then i am purchasing four units if it is at 2 i am purchasing six units now if i join all of these points then the curve the resultant curve that i get is nothing but the demand curve and what is the demand curve telling you demand curve at all points if you take any point on the demand curve it is just telling you the relationship between the quantity demanded for a consumer and its price kitne price pe aap kitni demand kar rahe ho kisi commodity ki that is given by the demand curve the law of demand is that the prices and the quantity demanded are negatively related to each other keeping other things constant and it is a very important uh, line in this law that when other things are constant we will just realize what other things are in our discussion we'll just come to that but for now just imagine that all of the other things are constant and all of the other things could include income of the consumer tastes and preferences of the consumer uh prices of other related commodities in the market all of such things are constant they are not changing they are fixed provided all of this is fixed prices are inversely related to quantity demand ki whenever the price will increase meri jo demand hai wo kam ho jayegi they are inversely related you can also put it in a form of a table jisko hum usually demand schedule bolte hain so you can put the demand uh, points jo humne jahan pe bhi points likhe the so you have prices you have quantity if i write all these points here 10 units pe i am consuming 2 5 pe 4 2 pe 6 agar main is tarike se apne uh, demand points ko present karungi then i call this as a demand schedule now next is to understand the difference between individual demand and market demand now jab hum मार्केट की बात कर रहे हैं बिकॉज वी स्टार्टेड विद हाउ मार्केट वर्क अल्टीमेटली वॉट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन इज द मार्केट डिमांड कर्व एंड द मार्केट डिमांड कर्व वुड कम्प्राइज ऑफ नथिंग बट इंडिविजुअल डिमांड कर्व बिकॉज मार्केट बिकम्स मार्केट बिकॉज ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स मार्केट क्या है मार्केट इज नथिंग बट अ ग्रुप ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स सो जब ये सारे इंडिविजुअल्स एक साथ आ जाएंगे देन वी विल गेट द मार्केट डिमांड कर्व सो आइडिया इज दैट यू जस्ट add these individual demand curves to get the market demand curve so for example suppose there is individual 1 and uh, individual 2 and i am saying that at price 10 the first individual is consuming 2 units of the commodity and the second individual is consuming say 3 units then at price 5 the first individual is consuming 4 units 
and the second individual is consuming say five units at price two the first individual is consuming six units and uh, he is demanding the second one is demanding say seven okay now when i join these points i will get the individual demand curves if i assume that the market is only comprising of individual one and individual two so if yahi do individuals hain then what i will do is i will just add the quantity demanded at each price this is called as horizontal summation or addition hum kya kar rahe hain hum horizontally add kar rahe hain matlab at price 10 क्या क्वांटिटी है टू इंडिविजुअल वन की इंडिविजुअल टू की थ्री तो मैं बोल सकती हूँ कि मार्केट में कितना डिमांड हो रहा है एट प्राइस टेन इट इज फाइव एट प्राइस फाइव इंडिविजुअल वन इज डिमांडिंग फोर टू इज डिमांडिंग फाइव सो द टोटल मार्केट डिमांड इज नाइन सिमिलरली एट प्राइस टू इंडिविजुअल वन इज सिक्स दिस इज सेवन सो आई हैव थर्टीन आई विल ज्वाइन दीज थ्री पॉइंट and the result that i will get will be called as the market demand curve this is how you can derive a market demand curve from individual demand curves please note that you are doing horizontal summation aap vertical summation nahi kar rahe ho you are not keeping ki quantity fix kara three or prices add kar rahe ho no you are keeping the price constant and then adding the quantity at that price aur wo fir point aap yahan pe third curve mein jo market ka curve hai us pe depict kar rahe ho the property of the market demand curve that compared to the individual demand curves you will notice that the market demand curve is flatter and flatter ka matlab kya hota hai that for a given change in price the change in quantity will be higher why would it be higher because obviously aap sare individuals ka uh, change in demand yahan pe compute kar rahe ho to market mein because sare individuals aate hain to uh, the change in quantity will be higher and that is why this curve is flatter as compared to the individual curve